Hello, everybody. Welcome here tonight uh, to the World Cup Studio Soccer, in which we're going to talk about the World Cup in Qatar. Because corruption, bribery, and the death of a host of migrant workers, the World Cup in Qatar seems to be the most controversial one yet. Even so, millions of people are still tuning in to this edition. People were watching here on this screen this afternoon. Uh, who are we cheering for? Should we feel bad for watching? And why can players be heroes the one day and be scolded the next? Where we are normally analyzing the game itself in a football talk show. Today, we will analyze everything but the game in Studio Soccer. My name is David Boeren, science programmer here at Studium Generale, and I will be your referee tonight in this exciting matchup. We, are talk we will be talking about the ethics of the World Cup, uh, nationalism and immigration, and discrimination in World Cup commentary. But I won't do this alone, because with me here tonight is assistant coach and ex-player of Excelsior Rotterdam, Thomas Verhaar. Please give a warm welcome. Hi, Thomas. Welcome. Thanks. Have you been uh, watching every uh, World Cup game so far? Uh, yes, because of the World Cup, uh, I had uh, 14 days uh, off, so I have enough time to, uh, to watch the games, and I, and I did most of them. So. Mm -hmm. And I also enjoyed it. Has it felt a little bit different than normally? Well, we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, the things around uh, the, the football in, uh, in Qatar, and uh, I think the the fact that we were talking about it and uh, and, and we're also making an, opini uh, an opinion about it uh, is is different than than, than it used to be. So uh, so th I think that's uh, that's a sign. Okay. So then we're going to talk with someone who wants to see maybe more than a sign. Um, the twenty second World Cup started last Sunday, and this one might be the most controversial one yet. Migrant deaths, corruption, and a surprising host all make for an event that has been infamous from the start. Who should be held responsible? Should we turn off the TV? Should players speak up? And what's the connection between sports and politics anyway? Let's find out with our first guest. She is a sports philosopher and a very outspoken critic of this World Cup. And she's worked for years as an executive within the Dutch sporting world at the Dutch NOC NSF. Currently, she's the director of the Erasmus Center for Sport Integrity and Transition at Erasmus School of Philosophy, which opened earlier this year. Please welcome Sandra Meuse. Sandra, take a seat. You so, forgot to mention that I'm a football lover. You're a football lover. So have you watched the World Cup? Maybe the same question no, for yet. you. Not, no. not yet or not at all? Uh, not at all. Okay. Until now. So before we dive into that, uh, Sandra, what is a sports philosopher? Ah, good question. Philosophical question. Um, there are many, uh, many categories of sport philosophers. There are the ones who are busy with defining, conceptualizing sport. What is sport? Uh, does it have to do with play? Or is it war? Huh? As we like to say, football is war. Uh, and there are the ones who are much more into uh, moral issues, uh, sport ethics. Which one are you? Uh, both. So uh, as a good philosopher, I'm also into the more ontological uh, issues. So this is about our view of the world. So whether uh, sport is a game or uh, a, a substitute for war, for instance. But uh, at this very moment, there are so many integrity uh, integrity issues that it's most of the time more ethical uh, uh, mm -hmm. discipline. And yeah. has it ever ever happened before, like such a controversial World Cup like this one? Of course. Uh, there are many international sports events with uh, a very controversial uh, political uh, context. Uh, it all started with Berlin, the Olympics, 1936. And as I see it, we are still uh, traumatized. Uh, the, the sports world is in fact traumatized by that uh, experience in which uh, sport for the first time explicitly was exploited by a very, uh, yeah, dubious, no, sorry, um, <coughs> problematic regime, which later turned out to be uh, the Nazi regime, 
and uh, we all know what came from it. Yeah, but uh, is this then, is this something, this has happened before, and we can also maybe think of like the World Cup in Argentina in the uh, the fascist times. Is it something that keeps happening? Is there, is this, don't, is, how is this one different? Well, uh, for the philosophers under, uh, under this audience, I'm a Hege, Hegelian, sorry, Hegelians. So I believe in uh, uh, evolution, mm -hmm. development, and as you told, Thomas, we, we talked a lot about this World Cup, didn't we? So the very fact that we are, we are so much in debate with each other about whether or not, how awkward do you feel, will you watch or not, this is new. At the time of Argentina, I was 12, so I did uh, experience that uh, commotion. It was more like uh, what we call in Dutch uh, links a hobby, a left leisure time thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I see it now, we have a much more broader societal debate about uh, this uh, event. So there's progress, Okay. but it won't be the last. Uh, then if, uh, if, if it's so controversial and we were talking much more about it, what do you think Qatar aims to achieve? Because it, it has been mostly controversial up until now, or hasn't it? Well, they, they did have uh, sincere intentions, of course. Uh, if you uh, uh, re-watch that uh, nice video about the, uh, the moment in 2010 that Seb Blatter opens the envelope and says, uh, yeah, it will be Qatar, uh, there's this, well, uh, speech by, uh, what, what's his name? The, uh, sorry, I don't know his name. Uh, Bin Es Salam. The uh, of the uh, yeah. Asian Federation, yeah. uh, Asian Federation, yeah, exactly. yes. In which he uh, promotes the World Cup as uh, the gate to uh, the Middle East and a new future arising. Wonderful sentences and a promise. But the rest of the audience uh, does not applaud. So there was this awkwardness from the very start. Uh, but at that time, it was mostly about the temperature, <laughs> and there was a uh, yeah, there were people uh, suggesting that there was bribery, but it was not at all about the social political uh, situation. Okay. This only started later. Yeah. Uh, and how did you respond, Thomas, when you heard about the World Cup being hosted in Qatar? I, I was hoping for uh, the Netherlands uh, back then. I, kn yeah. I know that, but. Um, yeah, I, I thought if there's a World Cup which uh, Qatar can attend and can play on, why wouldn't be why wouldn't be held in Qatar? That was my first uh, opinion, I think. Okay, and and has that opinion changed a little bit in the meantime? Yeah, that was before the stadiums uh, were uh, were built, so uh, so so that made a lot, a lot of difference for me and. Um, in a dressing room as a footballer, you're in there with a lot of cultures and uh, and, and a lot of people who think differently about life than, than I do. So I think that as a footballer is very hard to to have a strong opinion on, 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 on these things. Okay. So then I, I think we're going to go over to a topic that might, might get you to have a certain strong opinion on things. Because if we talk about responsibility for... It's something you hear often mentioned in the, the media, the responsibility for players, the responsibility for people like us watching or not watching or the, the responsibility for even FIFA, the question becomes, are you going to watch the, the World Cup? And we actually send some of our student vloggers to over the campus to ask people if they're going to watch and why yes or why no, or if they feel a little bit iffy about this. And I think we have a, a video that my colleague is going to start. Yes. Yes, definitely. No. Yeah, I'm going to watch the World Cup. I'm going to watch it because I'm a football fan. Yeah, probably. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna watch some games, definitely, depending on how well Germany does. Uh, probably not. I think Brazil, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely, like, Argentinian matches. I will uh, I will be excited for Portugal. I don't know if he's participating. <laughs> I really don't care because my country didn't qualify, so I'll just watch it for the fun of it. <laughs> uh, Germany, but I don't think that's very likely. Uh, Portugal, because I love Cristiano. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think a World Cup should be hosted in Qatar, especially given like the 
bribery accusations that have happened and all, and then also the workers' rights issues? It's, it's a tricky situation because obviously it's not very ethical, but at the end of the day, it's the World Cup, it's hard not to watch. I, I didn't like what I heard. Mm, I think for most of people, it wouldn't matter. Actually, I don't believe that it will be enough for people not to watch the World Cup. It being in Qatar is probably not the, the best. Yeah, so I think FIFA is very notorious for being like very, very corrupt. And why would you give a country like Qatar the chance to have the World Cup in the first place? And I definitely know some people who uh, will not watch the World Cup for that reason. So yeah, uh, I think maybe that's a sentiment that's shared among a lot of people here. Uh, Yes, it's bad that it's going to happen there, but I'm going to watch anyway. So, Sandra, the, the big question, should we watch, according well, to you? I won't answer that question for you. Uh, I think uh, every uh, individual has their own co conscience. And um, it may be different for uh, people, but, but, but. <laughs> um, something happened in a global political context, which had to do with football. But um, as we are so attached to that game, huh? the, the, the magic of the game, yeah, we surrender. <laughs> and if you're a real football lover, it's difficult to resist. And this is, to my opinion, the very reason that the whole FIFA regime is still capable of doing what they're doing. I mean, we all have probably been watching the Netflix doc uh, uh, FIFA uncovered. Well, it was even worse than I thought, and I'm quite, <laughs> I'm quite, uh, uh, yeah, involved in this. But so since, since then, some things changed, didn't they? Uh, since 2010, you yeah. mean? Yeah, happily. I mean, there's a, a growing concern about huh, the way uh, FIFA operates. But on the other hand, if we see how Infantino now. Uh, materialize his presidency uh, with an awkward speech and the next day a decision to uh, uh, prohibit uh, that sign, huh? the one, one love, uh, one love armband. Uh, armband. Yeah. yeah, well, it, it only illustrates that it's, that it's hard to really change that culture. But that's maybe something you're, you're touching upon. They're talking about, if we talk about the one love armband that was mm. supposed to be worn by the players to show unity um and that was well uh the fifa banned it or well said you would be postponed or get a credit fine yeah. uh, or a yellow card we're talking about the responsibility of players to step up and and i wonder thomas as an ex-player yourself uh, and as an, a coach right now do you think players have a responsibility here i don't think they have a responsibility but i think they uh, it, it it would be nice as a person or as a as a human being to to step up and and speak out so what germany did or what denmark did uh, me as a person likes it very much but i also think that uh, players are not always capable of taking decisions like like these and uh, and don't want to be capable of taking decisions like these so uh, the word responsibility is not the right word for me and why would you say they aren't able to take this decision? Be because uh, most of them didn't even finish high school. Uh, and, 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 and even people who finished high school, who studied for years, uh, think it's hard to make decisions like this. So uh, just because the guys, these guys can play football uh, well and, uh, and are good football players, doesn't mean they can, uh, they're able to make, uh, to make these decisions. So. Um, they will always, always be influenced and, uh, and, and some of them like to speak out and some of them don't. And I don't think you should, uh, yeah, you should hold them, hold them uh, responsible for that. Okay. And so uh, yeah, well, um, they're citizens as well, huh? like all of us. And they have been captured in a, yeah, as I see it, global political game. And of course, they're first and for all football players, which is their job. Huh? And we want them to be heroes. And we want to be inspired by them. But hey, then there's this very situation. And then all of a sudden, they are not capable. So this is my ambiguity. Eh? I, 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 tr I struggle with that. Why should they not feel a certain responsibility? Of course, they're not politicians. They're not executives. They're not managers. 
But in the end, they are <laughs> human beings who have to have, yeah, who could take a stance. And I always like to refer to the uh, American football player Colin Kaepernick, uh, who did take a stance. Okay, he lost his job. <laughs> uh, but uh, something came in, uh, uh, in, in place for that. So uh, why not should a football player do whatever? Uh, and of course, it's not their task to change the FIFA regime. That's a different job. But as the FIFA regime does not uh, take the lead, huh? we know enough, uh, there, there will be others, other stakeholders, huh? like sponsors, uh, supporters, and why not players and coaches? They are involved as well. And why do you think it doesn't happen right now? Maybe a question for you both. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think every player uh, mm -hmm. th thinks about it the way you do. No. So, uh, some of them maybe uh, think about their job as being more important, and and yeah. they want to play in Saudi Arabia or Qatar after their uh, yeah. after their clubs right now. So if they take a stand, yeah. they won't be able to do that anymore. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't think every player thinks uh, that that the World Cup over there is 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 wrong. So th so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so it's not a reproach. It's just uh, an observation. Yeah. And we t we talked about uh, FIFA being corrupt or whatever. Uh, well, if we want to change things, then the whole system should change. Uh, and if it doesn't start at the top, okay, why not start with you know um, the people watching, uh, fan engagement, mostly positive. But we could also use it, um, yeah, uh, in favor of change. But then let's get back to you don't want to say for us, should we or should we not watch? You're not watching, you are watching, I am watching, I can admit. How, how, if you can't tell, tell us what to do, uh, which may, might be a little bit much, get too much, can you tell us how we should come to our conclusion? Should we think more about it? Well, it's a matter of, um, you know, pros and cons. Yeah? And uh, of course, <laughs> If people interview me or talk with me about this moral dilemma and I'm in favor of change and I, uh, I, I try to be uh, optimistic <laughs> because it's very easy to be cynical and say, well, now things will never change. Okay, I have this job. I need to go on. So let's, let's keep silent. Yeah, then we will be uh, surrendering to a new awkward... <laughs> Uh, regime which will do the following World Cup. Uh, I don't think, I think there is uh, a possibility for change. Uh, but what you also often hear though is that, uh, I mean, these players didn't choose to play the World Cup here that happened years ago. So should that be taken into account into the, in into yeah, everything? Well, the, uh, uh, again, this is, is a, a, an opinion about a very dependent, huh, a very almost as if these players, who earn a lot of money, are not capable of making any decision. And they are. Uh, so they, uh, uh, we heard today that Cristiano Ronaldo resigned. So they, they are capable of changing our perception of this game. So... Um, uh, how do you mean uh, Ronaldo resigned? Like from Manchester United, yeah. uh, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So there is... A possibility for moral agency. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is in favor of his career, but uh, we all know that that fragment in which uh, Ronaldo replaces a bottle of Coca-Cola, which was quite <laughs> provoking. So there are all different kinds of um, actions that we could imagine, but, and but uh, they I shouldn't be expected from players. I think. Yeah, in a, in a perfect world, you're <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yeah. But as the uh, FIFA regime uh, and uh, you know global politics um, withhold, uh, other stakeholders, different stakeholders will uh, take a stance. And this is happening. Uh, we all know that certain uh, sponsors, so business partners, were not happy to be uh, involved in this uh, World Cup. I think this is a very positive 
uh, development. And do you maybe agree, Thomas, that then we should maybe that the sponsors should be the ones that will change the game and not necessarily the players themselves? No, I, I think FIFA are the are the ones who are most capable of changing the game. But I have another question because yeah. uh, th th there was an interview with the French uh, goalkeeper, uh, Hugo Loris. I don't, I don't know yeah. if, you, if you've seen it. He, he, he said uh, a lot of people come to France and we expect them to change their behavior like our, uh, like as we demand. So now we come here in Qatar and so we do the same. Uh, yeah, but it will mean that people will be in jail. Yeah. So I think that's crossing a border. It has to do with not like like uh, mores or um, political um, conditions, but this is about human rights and about the values underneath our um, internationally accepted uh, United Nations um, program. So uh, that's that's uh, I, I hear this argument. Uh, we come across it much more often. And it's, it's, it's kind of an excuse. I mean, um, uh, we're talking about people being arrested because they, are, they have a certain uh, gender uh, identity. Well, this is quite something different than uh, being an employer, a migrant employer, and uh, trying to uh, uh, integrate in a, in a different society. And maybe uh, a question that still lingers, and it's also something you often hear. Uh, you often hear from FIFA that sports and politics should not be mingled and that they should be kept separate. Is that then a possibility, according to you, or not at all? Well, I think they, they um, uh, materialize every day that sport and politics are completely coincided. So, uh, in fact, this is a fallacy. And uh, we are at the dawn of a new um, fundament, foundation, on the modern politics, oh, sorry, modern, modern sports. It should be uh, in a political surrounding. It should be aware of their uh, risk to be exploited by global politics. And if we don't, uh, uh, these kinds of incidents, like uh, the World Cup now in Qatar, will uh, happen again. Yeah. Then uh, maybe I have one last question for you. If the Netherlands yeah. reaches the final, are you still not going to watch? Oh, might no. I call you then? Okay, <laughs> yes. Now I will not give you the answer, but I help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. Yeah. Please give a warm applause to Sandra Nielsen. <laughs>